All right, guys, so we're at the Oaks Reptile Show, and uh, we're gonna take a look around. Things had to be moved around because of COVID, and so it seems a little bit more empty than it is, but I think it's more space than what they normally do. So let's stay tuned and check this place out. All right, so I'm here with Boris from BB Crested Geckos, and they have Lichianus as well, which, you know, we're, we're big into the new Caledonian stuff, and we enjoy it. Look at this big boy. So, Boris, what, what's your, uh, your favorite thing you got going on here, and kind of is this, I know you guys have a lot of Crested Geckos, but are, you're pretty big into the lychees. Yeah, we started with the Crested Geckos originally because we fell in love with the easy care and the great colors everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the different colors range from bright yellows to bright reds and same thing with Lichianus. You can get a really dark, beautiful lychee with bright red spots. You can get a, a light Lichianus with huge white spots. The colors and sizes do definitely do range. This here is a GTA, uh, very large male, got his tail taken by his girlfriend, but regrowing it back little by little. <laughs> and over here we got Jimmy, this is Hulk, this is Jimmy. Jimmy's a high colored island cross. You can see the size difference. Even yeah. the head structure is the huge difference between a GTA and an island cross. And yep. when you mix the two, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can get an animal that has dark coloring and the pink spots all in one when you mix the two together. Yep. So we do try to give a wide range of different big and small, colorful and not colorful Lichiana. Same thing with the Crested Geckos. We like to try to have people who are not advanced experienced be able to experience a Crested Gecko for $50 and then an experienced gecko breeder that can experience a gecko for more more high color. And same thing with Lichianas. We have low end and we have high end. That's great. And so one thing that we were talking about a little bit before we started filming is that New Caledonia is being kind of taken over by uh, people doing palm farms, right? So um the the natural habitat is going away for the lichianus and so one of the ways that we can uh, kind of conserve all of the species there is through captivity and that's what you guys are doing breeding yep. and yep. you know breeding having and keeping this the numbers up to make sure that the animal will stay in the pet industry and and the pet trade and honestly in the wild for, for as long as we possibly can uh, yep. Up until 1994, they were thought to be totally extinct because they were so way high up in the trees that nobody would right. look for them. Yep. So Absolutely. yeah, for sure, for sure it, it's definitely a problem. Uh, yeah. The palm, the palm farmers, and also logging. They they yeah. buy they buy wood from New Caledonia. For, so for sure, us being able to keep them in the pet trade has saved them. They would have yep. been extinct by now. From 94 till now, 2021, yep. they would have definitely extinct if we did not have them in the pet trade. Right. And they're an awesome pet. In my in my opinion, I call it the bucket list gecko because once you get it, you never want any other type of gecko. That's its intelligence, true. its size, its docile. It's so yep. docile, you, I can literally rub its belly. Yeah, yeah. No, they're awesome. I, I really do enjoy them. And we have a wide range from big and small and different colors and so on and so forth. We even have one of Holt's babies here today. He's hiding right there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yep. And we bred, we bred Holt to a big new Ami girl to try to get the dark base with big pink blotches. Nice. Try to give a little diversity, not just always a pure, 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 but yep. a little bit of a mix. Awesome. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a little size and you get a little bit of color. That's great, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I really appreciate what you're doing and you have some beautiful animal, Thank animals. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping so, by. Yeah, thanks. You're awesome, man. All right. See you soon. Put it back. So I'm Joe Yakavazi, and this is uh, medicinal leech, the root over uh, verbana. Okay. And these are the European medicinal leeches. They're bred here in the United States um, uh -huh. in mass for universities and stuff like that, and for a lot of different therapeutic processes, sure. wound care and healing and things like that. And I'm in the process of breeding these guys for uh, my school. Have you been successful at breeding them? Yes. So I have a cocoon that was um, opened last year, had about eight to ten small leeches that are still swimming around their tank at home. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So tell us, what's the process of breeding leeches? Well, they need a large tank, cool spring water, um, some sort of basket with lots of sphagnum moss in there so they could lay their cocoons in it and also feel secure. They need gravel lining the bottom so they can shed their skin and it just kind of comes off in little um, translucent sloughs. And then 
Eight to ten months later, they're hermaphrodites, so they possess both female and male yeah, yeah, sexual yeah. organs, but they still need to copulate, you know, and then hopefully the cocoons hatch into little leeches. That's, so That's cool. pretty amazing. Actually. Feeding them is another thing because you have to feed them yourselves. They only need to eat adults about one to two times a year, which is not a lot, but it's still kind of daunting for someone who's afraid of it. But once yeah. you get used to it, it's not that bad. It just bleeds a lot, so keep a lot of bandages handy. Huh. That, One that's amazing. two times a year is insane. for the adults. Yeah. So the babies, how often? I would feed them once every two months or so, just to get them, give them some size. Once every two months, and they so they attach to you and for like 20 minutes at a time, and then they engorge themselves, and then they drop off when they're done, and then I put them back in their tank. Man, that is pretty cool, dude. And what's the most uh, you fed at once? Uh, I've had about two to three babies on me at once. They got pretty big and fell off. So you gotta keep a lot of bandages handy because they secrete this compound in their blood that keeps the blood flowing. Yeah. And it also anesthetizes it so you don't feel it. So it's just kinda, you know, allows them to do what they're yeah. doing unbothered. Gotcha, gotcha, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I'd see if I had them, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna put 50 on, let's see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be, why am I so lightheaded? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, so yeah, they don't typically attach outside of the water. Yeah. If I wanted her to actually attach to suck blood, I'd have to put my hand in, and then you'll feel like a small slice, and then it starts to feel numb, and then you can take them out and just kind of let them do their thing, and then put them back. Huh. Right they could be out of the water for quite a long time. She'll just keep kind of wandering around until she finds water. Interesting, man. That's yeah. super cool. Sounds fun, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's one of the most interesting things you see at a reptile yeah. show. Yeah. I figured to bring some eyes to the table and things like that. And Absolutely. I like talking about them. You know, it's part of research. Yeah, no, it's great, man. Well, That's it's awesome cool, man. meeting you, and uh, we'll share your uh, information here. So, if somebody wants to get a hold of you. So, you do uh, spiders too, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> primarily. <laughs> we, uh, we had a couple spiders, but. Egg sacks and all that, we decided we against it. <laughs> we grew them up for a long time, like five years for B. Smithies. And, oh, yeah. And then we were like, eh. It's a labor of love, you know? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, thanks. This is Joe's Tarantulas. Thanks very much. This is Kevin from Gillywater Aquatics. See the sign behind him? And that's right, you can see what he's got going on here. So, how long have you been breeding? Uh, we've been breeding for about three years now. Um, okay. We started off, it was an accident. We got three that we were told were females, and we ended up with a whole bunch of babies from three females. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and it just has grown since then. We've, we've expanded our the offerings, we've, you know, uh, the colors and morphs that we uh, produce. Yeah. And yeah. So, how, tell us how hard is it to keep one of these axolotls? Keeping them is very simple. Uh, they they don't require any light. They don't require any heat. Um, filtration is really up to you. Um, we use we recommend uh, sponge filters. Yeah. Um, just because the, the over the back filters cause a current, and we find that it, it tears away at their gills. Um, okay. It it doesn't kill them but it doesn't they look prettier when they have nice big fluffy gills yeah um, spot cleaning the tanks for you know the messes that they make other than that just keep the water between 56 and 68 degrees and, and they're going wow that's awesome and so just fresh water not like yep fresh water yep, yep. that's and awesome well and you got them I mean they're pretty reasonably priced I, I couldn't bring one home today, but I will bring <laughs> home one of these if you don't mind. Absolutely. So I'll take one of these. This is the, the only one I can afford at the moment. Even though this Much is more, easier upkeep on yeah, it is, it's, it's a lot easier and it's super soft. So it's perfect for me. So thank you so All much. Right. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks guys so much. It's been really fun. We met a lot of people. There's a lot more people here than uh, even right here, but yeah, these guys are all breeders and we're all having fun. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe this. Watch Herp House Rock, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Got this, buddy? Yeah, I think so. You need to slap me in the face? No. <laughs> you're, you're waist up, right? You're close? Waist up. All right.